The People's Republic of China, the most populous nation on this earth, with its second largest economy and the third most powerful army. Today, a global superpower, yet 45 years ago, the Middle Kingdom had yet to encounter its newfound modern day power. In 1971, American President Richard Nixon sent National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger to Beijing for a secret encounter between the United States and China to pursue better relations. Kissinger's groundbreaking encounter and exchange with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai led to the eventual resumption of diplomatic relations between China and the United States, paving the way for China to emerge from the shadows into a global economic powerhouse and for it to form an interdependent relationship with the United States. China faced multiple challenges at the turn of the 1970s. In the North, deadly border conflicts between China and the Soviet Union created a chasm between Beijing and Moscow. These conflicts distanced China from the strongest communist power at the time and their most logical ally. China was also enduring the painful cultural revolution within its borders. It beleaguered its economy, plummeted living standards, and killed 1.5 million civilians. Simultaneously, the bloody Vietnam War was being fought south of its border. China provided decisive equipment and advisors to anti-American North Vietnam, furtherly stretching its already drained resources. This is China Studies professor David M. Lampton. China was 25% of the world's people, and it covered a space as big as the United States. Yet, China was in isolation, without anyone to turn to for help. A wounded beast teetering on the brink of life or death. In the United States, the Vietnam War also posed a significant challenge. It had dragged along for a decade with no clear end in sight. The American public was restless and angry about the conflict that had taken the lives of 60,000 young Americans. It was clear that something had to change. In 1969, America elected a new leader into the White House, Richard Milhouse Nixon. His presidency is well known for his momentous gains in foreign affairs. In 1967, he took note of China's precarious situation. We simply cannot afford to leave China forever outside the family of nations, and the world cannot be safe until China changes. He even announced in his inauguration address that his administration was seeking. A world in which no people, great or small, will live in angry isolation. From the start of Nixon's tenure in office, he reached out to the Chinese. He wanted to use their dangerous predicament to persuade China to use his influence over North Vietnam to end the Vietnam War. After two years of undercover negotiation fearing public backlash, he sent National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger to Beijing in the summer of 1971 on a rapprochement initiating encounter. Arriving in Beijing, Kissinger immediately set out to work through conducting what he called the most searching, sweeping, and significant discussions he had ever had in government, Kissinger and Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai exchanged stances on many different world issues during their landmark encounter. At the end of the two days, Kissinger departed Beijing, having explored new common ground between the two nations. Just a week later, Nixon made an announcement that shook the world. Premier Zhou Enlai, on behalf of the government of the People's Republic of China, has extended an invitation to President Nixon to visit China. President Nixon has accepted the invitation with pleasure. With that, Nixon was going to China, and the wheels of rapprochement were set into motion. The rest of the world also became aware of China's potential. That very October, the United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 2758, restoring all its rights to the People's Republic of China. The Republic of China also known as Taiwan, which was the previously recognized government of China by the West, was expelled from the United Nations, and its permanent veto power holding seat on the Security Council was transferred to the People's Republic. Ex-Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd later remarked, Here we have a huge change, and that change is China entering the United Nations. All of a sudden, Communist China was thrust into the global spotlight. It encountered newfound power and influence soon followed. Pleased that the first steps to lead China out of angry isolation had been taken, Nixon traveled to Beijing from the 21st to the 28th of February 1972 to meet with Premier Zhou and President Mao Zedong. 
I remember one reporter writing that it was like visiting the dark side of the moon. This monumental encounter piqued the interest of the Western world. China was the immoral and poor communist nation, while America was the torchbearer of democracy. Nixon and First Lady Pat proceeded to visit Beijing, Shanghai, and Hangzhou, exchanging ideas with the Chinese pertaining to eventual normalization, as well as getting embraced by the Chinese people and immersed in the Chinese culture. At the end of the week-long trip, the Shanghai communique was released, detailing the two nations' plans for rapprochement. Progress toward the normalization of relations between China and the U.S. was in the interests of all nations. Concurrent with the United Nations decision, the U.S. agreed that Taiwan is a part of China. Neither side would seek hegemony in Southeast Asia, and liaison offices would be established to facilitate future encounters and exchanges. Before pen had been put to paper, normalization was still a pipe dream. There were too many potholes, too vast an ideological gap to bridge. Yet, the Shanghai Communique laid the groundwork for China to work with the United States and build one of the most crucial international relationships in history. Nixon noted during a toast on the trip, What we do here can change the world. Watergate and the ensuing instability of American politics meant it took seven years after Nixon went to China for relations to fully normalize. By then, the president of the U.S. was Jimmy Carter, and Deng Xiaoping was the de facto leader of China. In December of 1978, the two leaders signed the joint communique on the establishment of diplomatic affairs, announcing the reenactment of official Sino-American diplomatic relations on January 1, 1979. After three decades of mutual repulsion, it had been done. In 2016, the U.S. and China remain influential global powers, and they have constructed a unique relationship. Our economic relationship is interdependent. Napoleon once said that China is a sleeping giant. Let her sleep, for when she awakes, she will move the world. In 2015, China's GDP of $19.51 trillion led all nations. None of this remarkable progress was possible without Deng Xiaoping's reform and opening policies, which opened up China to foreign investment and created economic encounters with the United States and the world that were previously impossible. These policies also created an immediate effect on the Chinese economy. Exports tripled from $7.3 billion in 1976 to $24.4 billion five years later. I would say that reform would not been nearly as successful if the U.S. had not been cooperative. Through reform, Nixon's trip raised China out of a tumultuous political and economic environment. Without Nixon, the option to become integrated with the world wouldn't have been existent for China, leaving it with no other choice but to follow its pre-existing ideology and become a hermit kingdom, which would threaten peace and security across the globe and pose a dire hindrance to the global economy. Despite the positives of Nixon's trip, today's Sino-American relationship is volatile. The two frequently quarrel over issues like human rights, freedom of expression, and territorial rights. Threats and provoking statements litter their exchanges, but their interdependence and interconnectedness prevent serious and damaging conflict from occurring. Nonetheless, the interdependence and magnitude of the relationship make it unique. Now. China is the most rapidly growing export market for the U.S. The two exchanged $600 billion in goods in 2015. China even holds over $2 trillion in American bonds. This interdependent relationship benefits the citizens of both countries in countless subtle ways, and the status of both nations as global superpowers cements its importance that has never been seen before in foreign affairs. As a result of Nixon's diplomacy and Kissinger's secret encounter with Premier Zhou, China has realized its potential and grown to become an integral part of the world economy and world order. This has created an interdependent and evolving Sino-American relationship in 2016, with both nations benefiting from Nixon's exchanges with China. Neither the world nor our two countries can afford the United States and China as adversaries.